Good morning, everybody. My name is Beth Ritter Guth, and I'm the Associate Dean of Online Learning and Educational Technology at Northampton Community College in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. And I'm so excited to be here with you today to talk about preparing the next generation and our smart apartment at Northampton. So this is, uh, I think, my third year at the Voice Conference, and I'm excited to share that what we're doing in higher education. So the gist of this presentation is how do we prepare students and instructors and others in higher education? How do we prepare them for the generation of voice? So, you know, in addition to being consumers of voice products like Alexa or um, with smartphones and Siri and things like that, how do we prepare them to be creators of content, programmers? How do we prepare them to make sure that the devices are safe and um, if they can be hacked, if they can be fixed, how we can um, secure them? And then how do we keep our students and our instructors prepared for the future? How do we keep them in the loop of um, the ever-changing landscape of voice technology and uh, helping them to uh, be able to move quickly. Um, higher education is uh, not the quickest moving of um, institutions, so um, how do we do that on our end to make sure that happens? And how can the industry help us? So right now, the challenges for higher ed are the same as they are for every discipline, but Higher ed tends to move a lot slower because faculty, um, you know, may have gone and, and done their credentials, you know, 20 years ago. And so the technology that they've used is not the same as technology that's available today. And the technology that's available today is rapidly changing. So things change constantly. And so how does a faculty member keep up so that he or she or they can, you know, present their information that's relevant to 2020. Um, you know, some information is obsolete within a year. Some information, um, some theories are true no matter, you know, when, you know, when it was created, they're timeless principles. So um, we also have a lot of reluctance in the faculty. So a senior faculty member who may have been tenured a long time ago are reluctant to use new technologies because they don't know them. And so they're reluctant. And so how do we navigate around those challenges. Um, the skill deficits are great, right? So you have faculty who may be reluctant because they don't have the skills and, and their reluctance prevents them from learning the skills. And so that means the graduates don't get the skills that they need to be impactful in industry. So how do we how do we address those challenges? Um, there are limited professional development funds. I'm at a community college, so you know our our tuition comes um, and is part of what funds us. We get a little bit from the counties that we serve. We get a little bit from the state of Pennsylvania. Um, but technology is expensive um, in some cases when you're talking about you know upscale drones and things like that. And some technologies are free or cheap. You know uh, freeware that we can use. So. It's really how do we train people to know what they can use and when they can use it? And um, how do we use our funds in the best places possible, right? So, and then one challenge that has affected us this year and has had a great impact is COVID, right? So the smart apartment that we're going to be talking about today, uh, we can't get into right now. We haven't been into it for nine months, so or sorry, nine weeks. So the stuff that's in there um, may be obsolete. It all has to be uh, reconfigured probably when we go back. We were in the process of building the apartment when COVID uh, struck. And so, you know, we, we have to go back and kind of rethink how we're going to use that space and what technologies are now obsolete and um, what we have to do to make sure that the technologies are still the most current and then plan for the expenses uh, because our our expenses are great f that we've poured out into other resources because of covid you know and it's hard to find the dollars to put back in that room so we're going to talk about those challenges and we want to talk about the solutions so you know the solutions to those challenges are the same whether you're talking about voice or whether you're talking about credit or non-credit it is easiest for us to move on the non-credit side because on the credit side, course changes, things like that go through committee and they have to be approved. And so you want to make a change to a criminal law class, right? That takes a group of people and it can take up to two years to make changes. 
On the non-credit side, we have the ability to partner with third-party uh, companies. We have the ability to write our own curriculum. We have the ability to offer those things quickly. We can put them up and out quicker. So uh, there's less of a process. Now, the what you give up when you do that is that it's not an accredited course, right? You don't get college credit for it. Sometimes we can make partnerships between the non-credit and credit side, and we've done that, for example, with, um, with ethical hacking and um, industry certifications then translating into credit. But, you know, sometimes it's not, um, it's not possible because of the way that the course is structured to do that. So they're not transferable. Non-credit courses can't be transferred to another school. So they're enrichment. So one of the solutions is being really creative and partnering with third-party platforms that do certification. So for example, in ethical hacking, we've partnered with the EC Council they deliver the ethical hacking um, course, and then we tack on a fee, um, like a finder's fee, but they are making predominantly the most money. So for the voice industry, we might partner with a third party who delivers the training, gets the money, and then we tack on a finder's fee. So it's being creative about the curriculum, offering um, what we see is needed in industry. Uh, prior to COVID, we had um, put up, and I was going to teach all these on the non-credit side, uh, like sort of an introduction to ethical hacking, sort of the baseline to get students interested in then going into uh, taking courses with uh, EC Council or CISPI or other other places. We were um, looking at drone uh, programming and 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 um, hacking of drones and the building and uh, defense of drones. And we were working with Dart drones to deliver that content for us. And then uh, the third piece, which is the piece that applies to to us in our conversation, is creating um, an Alexa uh, programming uh, certificate so that students would learn how to uh, program uh, basic uh, skills and games for the Alexa to give them that skill set so that they could go out and work as independent contractors or work for industries that are looking for people to make uh, skills and games. So the, uh, the other solution that we have is really to just constantly introduce the newest models to folks. So as, um, you know, Amazon or Google or whomever come out with new um, tools and, and strategies, you know, we, our job is to be in the know and to help um, share that information with as many people as possible. So if we see a new tool on the market that's really cool, um, that we think would be impactful, say, for example, in the um, travel and tourism industry. It's our job to know it and then get people in to speak to our people who teach in those subjects um, so that we can kind of partner them up so that when our students go to apply for jobs, they have the skill sets that are necessary to work in those industries or to work for those kind of places. And we see that, for example, right now, we're looking at bringing in um, the hospitality robots. Uh, I think um, a few health hotel chains are using them now, but Marriott, for example, um, was one of the first to use these these um, these robots that greet people as they come in. And when they did exit surveys, they saw that one of the things that almost everybody said they thought was cool were these robots. So um, how do we have people? So our job is to prepare students who know how to program those robots, know how to fix those robots, know how to break those robots, and then make them stronger and rebuild them. So. Um, it's knowing what the new models are. And then, you know, really the opportunities we need to provide to students and to industry to have conversations, but also to have physical hands-on opportunities to work with the devices and the software and the equipment. Um, there is no one place that you can go to learn, you know, how to program, you know, an Alexa app that's going to work with a smart fridge and then break that you know, and then override that, you know, and hack it and then fix it and make it stronger. There really isn't a one-stop place. You can kind of, you know, cobble together different different platforms. We want to be a one, uh, one-stop one solution for industry to send people, but also for students to learn. And that is what um, was the, the thought behind creating the smart apartment. So uh, Northampton Community College has three uh, large campuses and one small campus. So our main campus is in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, and uh, you'll know that if you know the Billy Joel song, um, Allentown, it's, Bethlehem is mentioned in that. And then 
one of our campuses is up in the Monroe County, um, which is in the Pocono Mountains. And then one of our um, campuses is in, is in South Bethlehem, and that's called the Fowler Family Center. And that is where the smart apartment resides. So it's in the basement. It's entirely um, powered off of a, an echo and everything in the room connects with that echo. So we right now we have a smart fridge, we have a smart microwave, a uh, smart vacuum cleaner, we have three televisions using different um, different uh, uh, platforms. So we have Roku and we have Google. And then we have a diffuser, and then we have the ring doorbell and some other monitoring devices. We have picture frames, we have um, all kinds of different surveillance cameras that we put into the room and we're, we're still building the room. So we're always, we're, we have a smart bed to put in, um, and we were building this room when COVID hit. So its launch date was May 1st, but because we weren't able to get in, we weren't able to, to finish the room. So we had, when we, that this will be our work when we go back. The best part about this room is that it's available to anybody in the community once it's finished, right? So we can bring in student groups from the high school. We can bring in student groups from um, the senior community. We were um, in the process of working with um, the Office of Disability Services in Northampton County to have some of their leadership come in. Because as we know, smart technologies can be instrumental in, in helping people um, navigate spaces that they couldn't navigate before. And so um, the smart devices can be a great help. We also know that these devices um, can be somewhat dangerous, right? So we have this diffuser, which costs 20 bucks. And it, you know, you can have it, you know, you can be in your car and say, I want my house to smell like roses when I get home. And that's fantastic. But we also know that you could create a chemical to put in a diffuser of a person you don't like, leave their house, launch the diffuser, and kill every, everybody in, in the apartment, right? So we want our students to be able to know how to stop those things from happening, but we also want them to know how to use these, um, these tools and instruments in positive and empowering ways. So there's all kinds of applications on the credit side. There are all kinds of applications on the non-credit side. And so the smart apartment was built in, with the idea in mind that we needed a place where we could teach people, community members, students, leadership, how all of these um, instruments work together. You know, how does the, um, you know, how does the fridge help somebody? How can the fridge harm somebody? What happens when the TV on the fridge breaks? Who fixes that? How does it get fixed? Is it, you know, does somebody have to come into your home? And if they come into your home, is your refrigerator not usable? You know, there's all kinds of things to consider when you adopt these kind of, um, these kind of devices. And then one of those pieces, which is relevant to our conversation, is voice. How do we help students develop voice products? And how do we help them think about how voice is used to connect all of these devices together. And so the best way to do that is to teach them how to program for voice because they don't necessarily think about how do I ask Alexa to do A, B, and C? What words could I possibly use to do that? So I teach English when I teach and one of the greatest assignments I've had is teaching students how to program a fact skill for Alexa on Henry David Thoreau or whomever, because it really helps them think about how people ask for information and then how we deliver back that information. And then, you know, there's all the things that we talk about at this conference about, you know, voice recognition and accents. And, you know, everybody has an accent. No matter where you're from, you have an accent to somebody else who's not from that area. You know, I'm from Bethlehem originally. And I, I say Bethlehem because that's how you say it if you're from there. If you're not from there, you say Bethlehem, right? So that's how we know if you're from around town or not. But how do these devices know exactly what you're talking about if you have any kind of accent or you use any kind of slang? And so it's been empowering to work with students to program uh, for a skill for Alexa because they get to learn um, how we ask for information and how we deliver that information based on what's asked. And so the smart apartment 
on a large scale is about, you know, talking about security and talking about the benefits of this kind of technology. And then on the granular level, it's how do you actually program these devices? And so uh, this smart apartment is new, but I've been teaching the Alexa uh, skill development course for about three years now, using it in all kinds of courses like English, which is what I teach, but also I had sociology instructors using it and psychology instructors using it. We talked about the psychology of voice, right? Um, and the, um, the way that the devices work in, in communicating with each other. So obviously computer science classes have, have uh, used this technology too. And we don't know what we don't know. So there's always room to grow. And so as the smart apartment grows and we you know, and we think about how these spaces are used in everyday life, what do our students need to know to be successful in industry and get jobs? How can they be more competitive if um, they're going into, let's say they're going into healthcare and they're aware of the smart toilet and how um, the benefits of using a smart toilet over using the hat that they've always used in the hospital, you know, that student is, is more marketable than a student who's never heard of it, right? So that's the goal. Let me. So right now, our partnerships, and I'm hoping this list grows, and this is really the work that we were doing before um, before COVID, is uh, we're partnering the credit to non-credit side. So um, in higher ed, that's always been a challenge because non-credit moves faster because they don't have all the rules and all the committees and all the things that go on the credit side. Um, it's been difficult, but Northampton has always been sort of, you know, renegade and exceptional in recognizing that non-credit work is valuable and, and, um, and many times, um, you know, equal to the credit side. So right now we're looking at um, ways that we can connect non-credit to credit. And, and we see that with like the EC council. So if a student takes our non-credit EC council course and then passes the exam, um, the first level exam, then they get credit on the credit side. And so we're, we are arranging those partnerships with the drone program and also uh, with Alexa programming. So if they've programmed a skill, they'll get some college credit for that if they've gone through all three tiers. So uh, these are the three non-credit courses that I'm currently teaching. Um, I'm hoping to pass this on uh, to other instructors as they as we find them and identify them. Um, but I teach an Alexa programming uh, course that was um, to start this summer, but because of COVID is, is postponed until fall. Um, but the end result of that, that class is that the students um, produce a skill and have it and learn about I learn about um, delivery through Amazon. And then we have an ethical ca hacking um, series of courses that leads to the student either registering or not for the EC Council course. And so it just gives them basic information about the dark web and how these devices um, can be hacked, how voice devices can be hacked. And then we have a drone business course that talks about using drones in industries like real estate. And, um, and then that leads to a, a, the course for the 107 pilots license offered through Dart drones. So uh, these are, you know, where we're starting and uh, we certainly want to expand. We have partnerships with other universities. We are, um, we were in conversations with the University of Tel Aviv, Israel uh, for um, uh, partnerships for hacking. They would hack us and we would hack them in our classroom hacking space. And uh, same with Dublin, Ireland. These were these were just in development right before um, COVID hit. And so they're kind of pending because everybody's situation has sort of changed. But we're looking for more partners. We're looking for industry partners. We're looking for uh, folks who want to come in and say, hey, try our device and see if you can hack it. And then, um, and then bringing in um, people to do that, to, to look at the um, devices and the software and, and look at the security and see if they can be hacked. Um, but also partnering with, um, with different industries and different community groups, right? Being, being, um, a conductor for that sort of, um, you know, we have this thing that we think would be tremendous for, um, disabled veterans. Well, we can get you disabled veterans to try this out and they can try it in our space. So they don't, you don't have to pay for them to go to Orlando or, or wherever you're located or Ireland or wherever. You can test it out, uh, right in Bethlehem and, and, and give feedback. So we really want the space to be 
a new kind of space. And for a community college, it's a very forward thinking uh, space. You know, typically you would see this kind of space at a four year institution, um, but in many ways, two year institutions can work a lot faster. So we're looking at those partnerships and we're looking at uh, increasing skills. We want people who can build these devices, who can program for Alexa, who can program for voice whether it's Amazon's Alexa or Siri or whatever. And we want them to be able to break these things to see how they're broken, who's breaking them, and then how to fix it. So we think about building, breaking, and defending. And that really is the core of the smart apartment. I hope next year to be able to show you part of this presentation was supposed to be a 3D tour of the space. But unfortunately, COVID hit, and so I've not been in the space, and it wasn't ready when we left. So hopefully next year, We'll be able to take you on a 3D tour of our space so that you can see it and think about ways that you can apply it or, or duplicate it wherever you are. So I thank you so much for this opportunity to speak. Um, I think that our future is voice driven. We use voice now all the time on our phones everywhere. And so the more that we can help students um, use that technology smartly and ethically, and I feel like if we can give them the skill sets of programming for and fixing devices, um, the better off that they'll be in their future. So thank you so much for this opportunity. My name is here on the screen and my email if you have any questions or want to have conversations or if you want to partner with us, um, that would be great. And thank you. Take care, everybody.